Oh, you look very fetching. Hey, I'm surprised Al's allowed another 18th birthday party after the trouble we had at Will's. Gives us glasses, lover. You OK? What? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Come on, gorgeous. Life's not so bad, eh? You still got me. Yeah. Look, Terry, it's about tonight. Maybe it's not such a good idea. What? Not going off me, are you? No. It's just all this sneaking in between bedrooms with Grandad next door asleep. Well, it makes me feel, you know, awkward. And I don't want him to find out. Yeah, all right. I'll uh, control myself. But it's not going to be easy, mind. You're too tempting by half. And don't worry. I'm not going to do anything to blow this. Just being around you makes me feel good. Go on, Alan. Can't you sip a couple of bottles of decent stuff in? Dad won't notice if you shove it on the bill. Tell it, champagne is over £20 a bottle. Aren't I worth it? Come on, you can't celebrate your 18th with cheap plonk. Well, I've only got one left, and I'm saving that for a special occasion. What? Your retirement? Oh. A drink with some old friends. Happy 18. Oh, thanks, Alan. Here's to an enjoyable, peaceful and civilised evening. Mm -hmm. All right. I thought I'd offer my services. You should have heard her. The things Cathy said she just turned on me. Well, she has been under a lot of stress lately. Oh, I know that. I'm only saying it's not like her. She's never spoken to me like that. Well, it's bound to take her time after the accident. I wouldn't mind if she was having a go at me, but, oh, perhaps I am just an old busy person. No, no, you're not, Betty. Cathy would never have managed without you. Well, perhaps she isn't managing. She hadn't got a clue where Alice was. I think it was just a misunderstanding. Perhaps she forgot that I'd taken her. Yes, but supposing it happens again and it isn't just you and me that find out about it. Folks round here can be very cruel. They'd soon be on to social services about her. Don't you think you're overreacting a little bit, Betty? Well, perhaps I am. But somebody's got to look out for her. Cathy's on her own. She needs her friends. <laughs> I think she'll miss me. Who? Oh, and Andy. Oh, I thought she hasn't had time to bush. Yeah, but I've missed her, have I? Aye, I know, love. But look, I, I just don't want you getting your hopes up, that's all. You know what they say, don't you, Lisa? Absence makes the art grow fonder. <laughs> Oi! Happy birthday, love. It will be, <laughs> as long as you don't cause me problems. We're just here to have a bit of fun. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. <laughs> hey, Kelly. Any chance of a birthday kiss? No chance. You're a married man. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I am, aren't I? Have a drink. What about me? What about you? Am I going to get a kiss? Well, I need a drink and I'll um, think about it. <laughs> it looks like it could be your lucky night, mate. <laughs> Scott, don't. What's the matter? Terry's over there. So? OK. I'll save it for later. How you go, darling? <sighs> right, come on. You said if I bought you a drink, you'd get a little cushion. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Um, oh, Roy, you haven't met Paul, have you? Roy Glover, Paul Murphy. All right, mate. All right, mate. All right. Um, we're just going to have a dance while you get him in. Four drinks, lager. <laughs> How about a dance? I can't. I'm working. What about later? Well, what about it? Well, your place or mine? Scott, keep your voice down. There you go, man. Everything OK? Yeah. What do you want? Wouldn't you like to know? What's a pile of lager? You know something, Scott? I don't like you. Oh, Terry, what a shame. I was mad about you. Oh, I just don't like the way you treat lasses, and uh, I don't like that smug smile on your face. Yeah, well, maybe I've got something to be happy about. Yeah, well, just a word of warning, eh? Any trouble, and you're out. I, uh, hope I haven't come at a bad moment. Oh, nonsense, Eric. It, it's always a pleasure to see you. <laughs> uh, only I've got some news I thought maybe Ned would like to hear. When are you leaving? <laughs> it's about your, your teddy bear. 
What about it? Well, I spoke with the collector, and he seems to think that your Mr. Cuddles is worth rather more than what we thought. Oh, uh, how much? <laughs> you better sit down. Oh, come on, then. One hundred pounds? For a teddy bear? Ah, <laughs> uh -huh. he's no ordinary bear. I don't believe it. And as a favour to you, dear boy, I'm willing to split the proceeds 50-50. Uh, 50 pounds? That's daylight robbery. Uh, How much you say? 50 pounds? Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, cash. 80-20 split to Ned. 60-40? 70-30. Done! But it's not for sale. What? Mr Cuddles is off the market. Uh, Ned, come on, think about it. 70 pounds cash in your hand? <laughs> you could treat yourself to a new sheep. I'm not selling it. All right. I'll offer you 80 pounds. Now, you can't get any fairer than that. Eric, I'm not parting with it. Why are you so sentimental about cuddly toys all of a sudden? It was our Linda's. I'm sorry. It's one of the only things I've got left of hers. I'm not parting with it. Oh, blimey! It's that old cow market in here. So, have you missed me? Yeah, I certainly have. You, you don't fancy doing any overtime, do you? Sorry. I'm still on my holiday. Did you have a good time? Oh, not really. So, is anything excited happen whilst I've been away? No. Well, yeah, sort of. Mm. What have you been doing? Nothing. Well, just put it this way, my love life's got a bit complicated. So come on, tell me all the gory details. Who's the lucky lad? I'll tell you later. So, who is it? Who's who? The lad that Trisha's being all cagey about. Might have caused trouble already. Oh, I really missed you. Oh. You? You and all. Hey, how's that, Caleb? Same as usual, miserable as sin. Funny, though, is she not going to give him your slippers? She? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I want to dance my favourite dingle. All right, you are, then. Don't... Uncle Zach! <laughs> yeah, but Mandy, I, w I wanted to tell you. Yeah, I miss you and all. I thought you were going to Kelly's party. Oh, I don't think I could cope with a room full of teenage toy boys. I get enough of that at work. Lucky you. All I get is Betty. Well, you could do worse. Betty has been a good friend to you. Hmm. What's she been saying? Nothing. Oh, come on, we're talking Betty here. If you wired a jaw together, she'll still be able to gossip using Morse code. Well, that's unfair. She, um... She did mention about the mix-up with Alice. <laughs> did she? And that you'd had words? I told her a few home truths, that's all. Well, she's taken them to heart. Look, I I'm sure you didn't mean to upset her. Actually, but... I did. Kathy. All I said was what everybody thinks. She's an interfering old gossip who's got nothing better to do than bitch about other people because it makes her feel better than the rest of us. You know that's not true. Isn't it? She's just sad and vindictive. I'm sick of her putting her nose in my business. What has got into you? Betty is worried about you and so am I. I am perfectly all right. No, you're not. Rachel, don't you start. There is nothing wrong with me. Now, the only thing bothering me is interfering friends. Best thing you can do is leave me alone. Well, if that's what you want. Yes, yes it is. This place is dead, we might as well shut up shop and go. Yeah, give us five minutes. Oh. Give us a coffee, will you? Well, so are you. You are looking at a man who's just lost 10,000 quid. How oh, come? Cool. Customer of mine. Backward farming type, you know, the sort. He has an antique that's worth thousands of pounds and he won't sell it. Why not? Sentimental value. Blimey, I'd order me out for 10 grand. What is it anyway? <laughs> Stuffed animal. Very rare. It's worth ten grand. Not stuck on his mantelpiece, it isn't. Can't put a price on memories. Coffee. I wonder if I should uh, up my offer a bit. What do you think? Why bother? Do what you usually do, Eric. Nick it instead. Don't be so ridiculous. No, it's a daft idea. What with Eric's track record, he'd be the prime suspect. <laughs> Oi. Probably too late now, anyway. I bet you next time you see that animal, it'll be standing in the antique road shop. 
What? <clears throat> well, isn't that what everybody does when they think they've got a priceless family heirloom? Of course, they say they'll never sell, but, uh Something with the coffee, Eric? Uh, no. Uh, the best value cup I've ever had. Uh, uh, sorry, business to attend. You've got it, uh... Hey! <laughs> Is this what I said? I bought you half a bottle of that stuff by now. Where's my kiss? All right, then. Just the one. Kelly, there's your drink. Oh, sorry, Roy. Disappointed me first. How is she? Is Kathy all right? What happened? As soon as I started to talk to her about it, she went mad. It was awful. So it wasn't just me, then? Hey, you're quiet. Yeah, what's the matter with you? You don't make a move on one of this lot, you'll ruin your reputation. Don't worry, I'm working on it. Got a pint, please. Terry will have to serve you. It's not Terry I want. But you've been ignoring me all night. I told you I've been working. What is it with you? You couldn't get enough of me yesterday. Scott, don't do this to me, not now. Do what? You're the one who's burnt hot and cold. What do you want from me? Well, you just stop messing me about and get rid of Terry. It's certainly livening things up, isn't it? It's not a joke, Scott. Just leave me alone. I think you're out of luck there, mate. You reckon? Oh, I. I think she's finally got the measure of you. Yeah. Yeah, she certainly has. Haven't you, Trish? What? You've got my measurements. Scott. She took them yesterday. What are you on about? Did she tell you? I think you better go. You've had enough. No. You've got something to say. Say it. What do you reckon, Tricia? Are you going to tell him or shall I? Tell me what? Scott, please. Me and Tricia. We slept together yesterday. It's true. Is it? I'm so sorry. sake, Eric. I didn't know there was a full moon. What on earth are you up to? <laughs> um, I have uh, been looking for you. I got a proposition to make to you. Why do I get the funny feeling that I don't want to hear this? <laughs> I'm thinking of holding a toy fair. Mm. Well, once the village hall is free, I want to put a bit back into the community. And take something out? Well, I must admit, it wouldn't do my business any harm. I could do with the goodwill. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that again. And, of course, I'd be paying the village hall committee rent for the hall. And uh, I'd be paying them a percentage of what I make. Eric, let me congratulate you on your Christmas spirit. Yes. Yes, well, I, I promise you, you won't regret it. I'm having a great time. Well, I'm glad someone is. And I told you there'd be no trouble. Oh, yes, there will be when I can find Terry. Where on earth is he? I don't know. Well, he went outside a minute ago. Well, this is ridiculous. I pay him to work, not to enjoy himself. Look, take over here and I'll see if I can find him. Can you stop worrying about him? He had it coming. Why did you have to do that, Scott? Because he had to know the truth. No, he didn't. Not like that. Do you know what I think? I think you only slept with me to get to him. It'd be stupid. You couldn't cope with the fact that I might like him better than you. After yesterday? I don't think so. You're only happy when you're causing trouble. Does it make you feel good? Better than everyone else? You do it too. Maybe I do, but I don't enjoy it. And I pity you. Terry? Oh, for heaven's sake, I'm trying to run a bar in there. We can manage with Tricia. She's good with crowds. Something wrong? No. No, just the usual. I guess I'm feeling old. I didn't have self-pity down as one of your vices. No, you're right. Self-pity's gonna get me nowhere. And now what are you doing? There's a few things need sorted out round here. Hey, my turn, mate. She's a married woman. I'm not, love. 
Looks like Terry's gonna make a speech. I'll sing you happy birthday. I reckon it's another birthday present from Mum and Dad. Hey, oh. it's a car. Uh, sorry to interrupt the fun, uh, but there's something I want to say to a very special young lady who's made a lot of us, and I mean a lot of us, very happy. Here she is. Uh, put your hands together, please, for uh, Trisha Stokes. Terry, please. What's going on? Terry, don't. You'll only make things worse. Worse? How can I make things... Didn't making love mean anything to you? Cos it did to me. I'm so sorry. You, you slept with him. Oh, I. And not just me. No, you see, folks, uh, Al and I provide the beer, but Trisha... Terry, that's enough. Trisha here provides that personal service, at least she did to me and to Scott. Blimey, Michelle's been busy. I want you to apologise immediately. Then I want you to leave. Apologise for what? For telling everybody the truth? That your precious granddaughter's no but a common... Get out! Al, I'm s sorry. You had to know. I said get out. Well, go on. All of you. Get out! Now! It would have to happen my flipping birthday party, wouldn't it? Uh, I don't know. I find it quite entertaining myself. <laughs> Do you think Trisha's all right, Arla? It's not Trisha I'm worried about. Scott. So, uh, you pleased with yourself? Well, I'm not the one who lost their rag, am I? Is that it? You really couldn't give a toss, could you? You pathetic, Scott. Yeah, is that right? Yeah. Hey, watch it. Right. I want you home now. You've got some explaining to do. Well, happy birthday. <laughs> Come on, then. I've had enough excitement for one now. Are you sure? Oh, <laughs> you old devil! Hey, would you have done that for me? Would you have defended my honour? I'd fight Mike Tyson for you, love. Oh. Hey, I'm not sure about Big Al, though. Quite a white one, there. <laughs> yeah. Aye, me too. What? I'll do the same for you. Same what? No, it, it went out. So you're coming, or what? No, you go on. Where are you going? To find Terry. Checking up on me, were you? No, I just thought you might want to go across to the party. I can't, I've got Alice. Well, I'll babysit for you. And have the village saying I'm neglecting her? No, thank you. Are you all right? No. Haven't you heard? I'm completely mad and a bad parent. Um, what are you talking about? Oh. I've had half the village checking up on me. First Betty tells me I'm an unfit mother. Then Rachel comes round to quiz me about my mental health. Kathy. They think I'm going mad. Kathy, all we're trying to do is help you. If it wasn't for you, I feel like my life's being invaded. They won't leave me alone. It's like being stalked and I can't stand it. Do you think I'm mad? No, of course I don't. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know you're the only person who I can talk to about it. I couldn't bear it if you turned on me too.
You don't have to say, I know. You know what? I know what you think of me. What everyone thinks of me. Terry did a pretty good job of it, didn't he? Now the old village knows what I'm like. Oh, Trisha. I've made such a mess of things. I really tried hard to finish with Terry, but he just wouldn't let me. What? I don't mean he forced me. He was just so happy. I didn't want to hurt him. And it all just got out of hand. Yes, yes, it did. I could have understood if it was just Terry, but Scott. I was flattered, having both of them after me. I'm sorry. You must be so ashamed of me. No, no, not ashamed. Just disappointed. Oh, granted, I really am sorry. You were badly used by both of them. <laughs> but I really hurt Terry. Tricia, Terry's a grown man. He knew what he was doing. Believe me, he's not worth crying over. Terry? I made a fool of myself, didn't I? After the way Trisha treated you, I don't blame you for what you did. No. It was stupid. Upset Al. Upset Trisha. Maybe she deserved it. No. No, it was the worst thing I could have done. When you say things in front of other people, you, you can't take them back. Terry, it's not your fault. Isn't it? I looked at Trisha and I thought, that's what I want. I didn't ask her if it was what she wanted, did I? I think she's an idiot. I know loads of lasses that fancy you. I stop kidding myself, don't you start. I'm not. Look at me, Mandy. I'm nothing. I live in my memories. I used to be a rugby player. I used to be married. What am I now? Terry, you're a great bloke. Look at all the things you've got. All your friends. Loads of people that care about you. You're not listening. I don't want friends. Don't you think I wake up in the morning and... and wish that there was somebody there for me? Not Al in the flaming pub. It's not enough anymore. It won't always be like this. You'll find someone. You don't get it, do you? I've found someone. I love her. I love Trish, but she doesn't want me. Oh, Terry. It's over for me. My whole life's a flaming sham. I can't go on like this. Feeling like this. It's tearing me apart. <laughs> 